Hey everyone, it's Christy and Edzia and we are coming to you from after the election. So uh, first, maybe just on a personal note, we could talk a little bit about our reactions to the results. Um, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> that face. Actually, this was me uh, on election night. So the polls came out and said, we were watching the BBC, it said, conservative is the largest party. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I know that. Come on, come on, I want to see the numbers. I want to see the numbers. <laughs> then they brought out the exit poll numbers and this was me. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I think that was pretty a good yeah. reenactment, wasn't it? So, yeah. and then she was doing that, the big open mouth thing, yeah. and I was doing what? So, <laughs> yeah, we were stunned. I think everybody was stunned. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that kind of changed uh, our agenda for the post-election because one of the things that we were really worried about was trying to do focus groups while they were forming a coalition and we had questions all lined up about democratic legitimacy in terms of the coalitions that had been formed and whether or not the government had a mandate to enact its you know compromised manifesto plan and all those just mm. out the window we're just back to normal majority government so uh, maybe it's fine in terms of like, you know, our data collection, that's not a problem. But it does mean that we're actually getting through our post-election groups a bit faster. Very quickly, yeah. Do you want to talk about why that is? Well, it just seems like there isn't much to say, almost. I mean, the participants, um, I mean, we are in Dundee at the moment. So uh, a lot of the Dundee participants had already made up their minds. Um, the two of, two of the three groups that we've done so far, we've had essentially partisans would kind of made up their mind um, well beforehand. And so in terms of telling us what their day was like, what their reaction to the results was, there wasn't that much detail that they could give us. Um, so there wasn't that much drama, let's say. I mean, the post-election, yes, there was a little bit of drama. Um, but yeah, generally, I don't think that there was a lot that people wanted to say or had to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, that being said, I think we're pretty happy with the amount, with the kind of data that we're getting. Mm -hmm. We've had here in Dundee, uh, one conservative voter who came in and talked about his vote choice and why he voted the way he did. And we've had um, some labor voters come through and talk about why they voted. And we've had people who stayed with the Green Party and uh, thought they were going to be green and stayed green. And some people who thought they were between S&P and green, two actually, mm -hmm. a man and a woman, who both ended up on the S&P side. Mm -hmm. and, and both were very articulate in, ter in terms of why they voted S&P, what they're going to do in the future and what does the result mean to them and, and you know how do they see, what do they see the future of Scotland being like. Mm -hmm. So they were probably the most articulate um, of our participants as well, in terms of just explaining to us um, what their vote choice means to them, you know, mm -hmm. so... What they were trying to communicate or what they felt a part of yeah. when they voted. Yeah. And tonight we're doing another one, our third one, and then we're off to Glasgow mm -hmm. and return to Dundee. After that, return yeah. to Dundee, and, but then leave for Cardiff. Um, immediately on Friday yeah yeah so I guess that's it I mean the other thing is, is this time it's um, well one we're still recovering <laughs> we're both still really tired yeah. from our mad dash around the country but this time it's been a lot easier because we have really great retention rates and maybe before we end the blog we can talk a bit about yeah um, the retention rates from the groups in terms of the pre to the post mm. so it's about two-thirds of uh, participants in the pre-election groups who are coming back from the post so that's about 61 out of 94 participants are coming back uh, many of those who are not coming back are um, not coming back because of prior commitments and not because they don't want to so in fact we've had close to 70 or even 80 participants who are responding to our call saying i'm really sorry i wish i could come but i can't because of so and these reasons and and again many of the participants who can't make it back are, are have said that they would be happy to be interviewed um, by phone. Some of them have said that they would be happy to write a response via email, although that's not what we are looking for, but they have offered it. Mm -hmm. So in terms of goodwill, we certainly have um, 
generated a lot of goodwill, a lot of interest in uh, among our people, our participants wanting to come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, when I did it in 2010, I had to top up in Aberystwyth at the post. I have clear memories of that and a few other places. So I wasn't able to maintain 100% re you know, retention from the pre to the post. But we've managed that. We haven't, um, we're not going to be topping up anything in terms of our data collection because of mm. deficiencies and uh, the cats playing with the, the, if the camera moves, it's because the cat's playing with the, the tripod. Um, we haven't had to do any of that. And I think for us now, it, it really comes down to just timing and resources. I mean, it's fine to do a 20 minute interview, but then that has to get transcribed and a 20 minute interview turns into 30 pounds for transcription. And That's 30 pounds for the participant. Yeah, and so it becomes not cost effective when we have such a small budget. I mean, we're still going to see if there are any participants in the pre-election mm -hmm. groups who are theoretically interesting for us and that we would really like to have in the data set. Um, so we want to know what their post-election experiences were. But yeah it'll have to be selective it would have to be selective rather than just using interviews as a way to catch everybody who couldn't come to the focus groups i don't just think we don't have enough yeah time or resources to to do that but it does mean a lot to us that they have, they want to and that they do write back saying i'm really sorry i wish i could come but i can't mm -hmm. actually yesterday well we mentioned we will mention to our welsh and our scottish participants that we're going to be applying for another grant to study the parliamentary and welsh elections coming up in 2016 and whether or not they would like to be re-invited back you know, as, a, as another mm. wave in the panel and they all seemed very happy to do that and then as we were parting you know ways with them you know maybe not seeing them again for at least a year uh yeah i got a hug from one of them mm. actually got a hug from we got a, two hugs mm. got one last night from somebody and got one last night as well mm. so yeah there is a real connection there and appreciation i think of people who come and uh, be, uh, we listen to them i think yeah. people really appreciate the opportunity to speak without being judged um, and whatever we feel I mean we are uh, human we have our own opinions we are both partisans um, and so we do have very strong opinions of politics on politics but I think as researchers we try our best I mean I su succeed much less than Christy does and so Christy has to remind me uh, to put my poker face on most of the time um, or some of the time but I think our participants really appreciate uh, the opportunity to just sit in a group and speak their mind without having to get into I want to convince you of my position I think they actually do appreciate the fact that we kind of uh, we create that space for everyone to mm -hmm. speak yeah, and I think it comes down to really, I don't have to agree with you as a person to respect you as a person. Mm. And I think that treatment of feeling respected is hopefully that's what we go for, that you come in here and we actually, like, if, if you're a person that I agree with, I disagree with 100%, I, it's still really important to me that I hear what you have to say, because otherwise your views aren't going to get into the data. Mm. And it's not about our views or their, it's about the data and it's about making sure that there's a wide representation of people from all political areas in the data and they're not going to be able to say the kinds of things that other researchers really want to learn if they don't feel respected. So I think that's what it ultimately it comes down to is treat people the way you'd want to be treated. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. Is there anything else in terms of the focus groups that we want to highlight? I don't think so. We're coming in on budget. We, so far, yeah. And I think that's about it. No, yeah. I think the next time we'll talk to you guys will probably be after Glasgow. After Glasgow, we'll do the Dundee one and we'll do the Glasgow one, and then maybe we'll say a little bit about what we're finding about SNP voters. We had some mm. indications and we have some preliminary conclusions, mm. but I think I'd like to hear a few more people talk about it before we say anything definitive. Mm. I definitely think we have an uh, interesting contribution to make in um, understanding who votes SNP and why. Um, we haven't seen much of that coming out in the media or in the post-election reflections. I mean, now there's a lot of preoccupation with what, why the pollsters got it wrong. And I think, in fact, you know, trying to understand why people vote SNP or why they have voted SNP in this election might help. Mm -hmm. Understand the SNP wave or the SNP surge. Yeah, in a, a way a that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, in a way that survey data won't. 
So, so yeah, come back after, um, like, I don't know, three days. <laughs> I don't know when the next video goes up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll give you guys some sneak previews on SNP voters and what was driving the SNP wave. So until then, I've been Christy. Bye, this is Anzia. <laughs> See ya. Bye.